And welcome back. Today we're flying out the Swift F7, 8.7 plane, and we all know this BR is kind of compressed. Up to here, you're going to get stomped. Down to here, you're going to stomp. This thing, however, is quite a unique experience because it's a plane with a lot of power and it's decently maneuverable, but it compresses really badly. And this makes the matchup against planes like the SU 7s, MiG 19s, and stuff very, very rough. Against planes like the Sabres, the MiG-17s, MiG-17s are kind of annoying to fight and you'll see plenty of that in this video. But Sabres, G-91s are pretty fun to fight, but the second you start fighting planes with a lot of power, this thing becomes very annoying. And look at that SU-7, he just got slammed in the head on by Razor. He starts laughing and I'm like, what just happened? I see the missile mark and I already had a feeling what it's going to be. And I'll show you just what happened because it's quite frankly pretty hilarious. Of course, I'm kind of used to it from Razor by now, but I mean, just look at this. It's such a good shot. And there he goes. It's fantastic. But going back to the video, I got two full games. I got some 2v1s, I got a 1v1, and I just got all, got all kinds of stuff. You'll see it all in the progress bar, so you'll see exactly what happens when. And that's going to be kill number one. Fire flash guy is basically stationary. And I want to get rid of these missiles as fast as I can. And why do I want to get rid of these missiles as fast as I can? They're extremely draggy. These two guys presented themselves very nicely. These are high value targets. That's why I went for the MiG-19 first. Second one slots on my six. And now I need to be careful. I need to not rip my wings off. That's why I cut the afterburner. And the MiG-19S especially. He can just air break me and I die. But he's not doing that, so I cut throttle, trying to make him overshoot in the hope that he will break off and run away from me and not stick to fight. And that's exactly what he does. He leaves me alone, and he's gonna fly away now, and I got a MiG-17 trailing me. And I'm gonna speed this part up, because it's me essentially flying straight to get some position here, to get, well, away from everyone. Because the MiG-17 and the 1v1 is very annoying, especially when he starts on your 6. The MiG-19 breaking off for me was admittedly very, very lucky. And I'm just trying to point that out, because if that MiG-19 stuck on me, we would have lost this game. MiG-17 is now chasing me up, and what I'm trying to do here is trying to bleed him off his energy. I'm trying to make it so that he, he turns for me, but he also has the missiles. And the MiG-17 AS, because of this, is extremely annoying to fight. It's not that much better than the normal MiG-17, it's the exact same flight model. But the fact that you can't really stall it out, because he can just pitch up to you and shoot an AIM-9B at you... Kind of hinders the way you fight these guys. Razor reverses the MiG-19S in his goddamn scimitar. That's going to be meme number two from this game. Unfortunately, he didn't actually record it. So what did I do there? I went horizontal. And now you can tell that I have a lot more energy than the MiG-17AS. Because I'm doing a slight bank here. I'm doing a slight turn. I'm trying to dodge his guns. Notice that the Harrier is coming in. So we are going to make it look like I'm going to be running away from him. In the hope that he dies for me. There he comes, Harry on misses, but we are going to recommit now. He's going to turn back for us, I'm going to extend. If he goes for me, he gets the Harrier on his 6, and if he turns for the Harrier, he gets me on his 6. The Harrier takes a very bad line, goes towards me for whatever reason. And now I want to make sure that I do not break off to the same side as the Harrier. MiG-17 is still on me, and I'm going to be dragging him around in the hope that the Harrier turns back around so that he can re-engage him. He, however, flies quite far away, just re-engage, because this is taking a lot of time. And I don't have that much time, because our team is down very, very much. Harrier recommits, they merge, and then it's my time to recommit. And you really have to team play in this thing. It's a great plane, don't get me wrong, but in these up tiers, and even versus multiple enemies, this thing is not a carry plane. It's a gimmick plane, it's pretty fun to fly, but the second you start getting up tier, the second you start fighting... Highly maneuverable planes that don't stall, that have good acceleration, that are very maneuverable. Like the MiG-17, it actually becomes kind of annoying. I'm trying to get the shots on, can't really get a shot, I'm going over 1000, the compression kicks in, I do not have a shot whatsoever. I shoot in the hope that he maybe might roll into it or might do something. I have plenty of ammo and I'm going to RTB after this fight anyway, so I don't really have to conserve it that much. But this thing, it's a great plane, it's a great gimmick. And if this looks like something you might enjoy, feel free to fly it. It's not a bad plane, but it's not a carry plane. Outside of the, the few exceptions that you might get. Say you fight a lot of uh, bad planes, a lot of sabers. You're going to struggle. Like sure, one saber, a 1v1 is extremely fun. It's one of the, the more fun things to do. If he doesn't actually keep his speed. The thing is, a lot of them do. And the way they roll around makes it extremely hard for you to kill them. 
The Harrier and me are bleeding this MiG-17 slowly to the deck until he's out of energy, out of options. We set him on fire and we're gonna go straight back to the runway, rearm, refuel and start the second part of the carry. Harrier tries to steal it. Very, uh, very great. He's gonna go into the ground here and Razor is gonna struggle with a MiG-19S. Well, of course he is a MiG-19S and a G91 R4 and in a stock scimitar or half stock scimitar you're not really gonna be doing much so he dies and now I'm left alone versus the MiG-17 or not left alone we are left alone with the MiG-17 a G91 as well as a MiG-19 and it's a MiG-19S I still got both my missiles I already burned 25% of my fuel trying to get here because the afterburner actually consumes a normal amount now it used to be kind of bugged it used to be very very slow MiG-17 is running to his airfield and I suppose he's gonna drag me towards his teammates because the MiG-19 landed about a minute ago so he's probably gonna be back up and he's probably gonna be rushing us but I need to get that MiG-19 out of the match because the second he gets position on me is going to be game over a MiG-19 one on one is problematic enough when it's multiple people you are likely going to die so I hope that he doesn't see me here I hope I can just pitch up to him and maybe slam him out of the air trying to get the lead in here I need to be somewhat desperate here because my team isn't looking too great. I have a Vautour and a Harrier that seems to be kind of inexperienced. There he goes, he fuel commits to MiG-19 and down he goes. Now I only have a Vautour left as a teammate versus well, a MiG-19 that can easily kill four of us at once. And a MiG-17 which I struggle in versus a 1v1 as well. So he comes head on, I spray a little bit, he rolls out of the way and I miss. Unfortunate. MiG-17 is still going straight, which gives me a little bit of room to go up for the MiG-19 here. Problem is, he has so much power, I might have an afterburner. I will never catch him in that steep of a climb. And now we got the MiG-17 on us, and I need to make quick work of this guy. But at the same time, this guy hasn't landed yet. And because of that, I'm just going to be roping him around. I want to 1v1 him, but the problem is a min fuel MiG-17 essentially, because he has like 2, maybe 3 minutes left. Depends on how much he flew at high altitude. But that's a plane I will never kill in a 1v1. When you're on similar loads, when he is on 20 and I'm on 10, even then it's tricky. If he starts on my 6, with that little fuel, it's simply not going to happen. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm outrunning the MiG-17 for a little bit. And I'm trying to time this so that I can slam this fire flash right into the MiG-90's cockpit as I start to fight with the MiG-17. So I start the turn here. I dodge the MiG-17 and we go head on, we shoot the fire flash and it connects. Thank fuck, because if I missed that I would have died. And now you're going to see how problematic this MiG-17 was going to be. Especially with the MiG-19 right beside him. Right now I'm trying to keep the line so that he overshoots. I'm trying to use his faster velocity here so he gets in front of me and he does. We reverse him. But he is actually in the better position here. I might be behind him, but he has more energy and he has the turn rate to use it. So now I'm forced to run away, reset and start from scratch. Which is fine. Not the most fun, but it's fine. I'm not going to throw the fight away. Not this far in. You probably would have seen the, the video anyway because it showcases the plane pretty well. But I'd rather wrap it up with a win opposed to dying when there's still a guy left. He's coming in. I'm cutting my throttle. I'm trying to save fuel as well as get position here because I need to reverse this guy quickly. But as you can see, this guy really likes going vertical. And the problem with that is that I cannot hang with him. Sure, I have a lot of power, but I don't have the turn rate and I don't have the retention opposed to a MiG-17 to stick in these vertical loops. Especially when he keeps him that tight, especially when he's that low on fuel. So we're going to reset again because he he playing his cards right. And because he is, I really can't do anything and there's also a g91 somewhere so if i'm gonna go like 200 kilometers an hour what might happen is that i'm gonna be stuck and then the g91 comes in and the g91 is another plane you do not want to fight if you're not in an advantageous position or in a position in which you can sustain yourself when you go slower than the g91 most of the time <laughs> You, you won't be able to sustain yourself. The MiG-17 is going RTB right now. I think he's out of fuel. But he's also going towards his friendly. Which he did with the MiG-17 earlier as well. So I'm not too sure if he's completely out of fuel. If he's actually going RTB. Or if he's just trying to get me 
next to his G91. So I'm going to be flying straight for a little bit. Look what the MiG-17 does. He doesn't try to recommit. So this time I'm going to assume that he's actually out of fuel. And we're going to spiral this G91 up. And we are going to absolutely slam him. Because the G91 doesn't have the best high speed retention. So if I keep this G91 above 750 kilometers an hour. And the higher that speed is the better. I will absolutely kill this guy. He's running the full AIM-9Bs. All four missiles in general. I don't know which one they are at this point. I just saw four missiles. So I know that he's a lot heavier as well. So we just go into this horizontal turn. I'm still going 700. He's pitching up for me. He's still pitching up for me. And at this point he's essentially stalled out. He's going about 2 to 300. Maybe 350. But he's still going up. It's taking him way too long to recover. And I am still going 500 IAS. He's going to be pulling inside of me here. I still have almost 300 rounds left for 2 kills. He stalls out. I gun him down. And that's going to be kill number 5. And now we are very low on fuel. So what I did. I turned my, uh, my engine off. I went to high altitude. Well, I didn't turn it off, I went to like 10% throttle, and I glided around. So now I have 4 minutes left, I cut about 4 minutes of footage out, I think, roughly. 2 to 3, two to three minutes of footage out, but it's just fuel saving, and I didn't want to show you. Missile goes absolutely ballistic, and we are going to put it into a vertical. I'm going pretty fast here, but the MiG-17, well, he doesn't commit. If the MiG-17 had committed here, I would have died. Uh, he would have died, sorry. But he doesn't. He keeps his speed. He goes straight. And he turns back in. And just like earlier. This guy is playing his cards right. Which actually makes it very annoying to fight. Of course I like having a bit of a tough fight. But after such a game. I just want to win. Whatever means necessary essentially. And this guy is actually. Going to break off. And fly towards his airfield. And I don't want that. Because I'm very low on fuel. So I want to make sure that he do doesn't even think about camping it. So I'm going to be turning back to my airfield. So that he turns around. And if he then recommits on me. What happens is. He's going to be as far away from his airfield as possible. He's going to be chasing me now. I can't really use the afterburner. I only have two and a half minutes of fuel left essentially. And with the afterburner it's going to be a lot less. And if I don't use it. This guy will absolutely rough storm me. So I'm kind of forced to use it. So I'm trying to turn very very shallowly here. Or very, very slowly. Maintain my speed. And we go 800 into the merge, which is not ideal. I shoot in the head on, hoping to connect. I shoot just around him. And look at that turn rate. He switches fuel load. He's not on 20 minutes anymore, as I hoped he was going to be. And we are back to square one. He's going vertical. He's going to maintain way more speed. And I don't have the fuel to really keep slamming that afterburner. So I'm going to be trying to make it back to base. He shoots missile number one. And at this point I think, well I have to turn, I have to dodge it, I have one and a half left. I'm not going to make the, the separation, I'm not going to get it, I'm just going to dogfight this guy. So that's exactly what we do. We turn up over his nose, we make sure he can get the shot in. We roll out of the way so he doesn't get the shot. I'm going a little bit slower here, I'm gaining position. I'm cutting inside of his loop. I'm going to go horizontal here because he, when he goes up, I'm going to get the shot. But what does he do? He reacts appropriately. And he does a flat turn as well. The problem is at this point he should have switched his loop. He's going straight here. I spray him down. I set him on fire. And he's going to burn up. If I had missed him there. I'm going to bet. 8 out of 10 times he would have probably killed me. If he had reversed his turn there. If he had turned out of my guns. If I had missed him there. But we don't. We have 10 seconds of fuel left. And that was kill number 6. Some quick rewards for the people that care about them. There you go. Have fun with that. And a few games later. Or a few games earlier actually. It was the first game that I did. And here comes the MiG-15. And MiG-15s and stuff. Well. I saved these fire flashes for them. Because well. They're very annoying to fight. Just like the MiG-15. MiG-17. The MiG-9. Basically every MiG you'll ever encounter in this thing. Our planes I use these missiles for. Especially in the head -on. They both really don't see it because they burn out extremely fast and they also slow down extremely fast making it so that 9 of the 10 times they will just fly into it as long as they aren't aware of these things. Now people will start using these they will probably well be a little bit more aware of them. F9F is probably going to go for me here. He goes for Razor but his trajectory was basically looking right at me. Razor won me it's an F9F8 and here comes the first missile. Three and a half kilometers away it's simply not going to hit. The thing is however if some Harrier shoots a missile at you react to the age you're gonna be struggling to dodge him 
Because when you go too fast, you compress, and when you go too slow, you are too slow to get out of the way of the missile. And in turn, it will still hit you. So missiles are very annoying. I'm just trying to keep this F and F straight. I'm not turning at all. I'm not giving him any kind of awareness. I'm just trying to make him turn away from the, the sea vixen. Now he turns a little bit in. So I'm starting to turn a little bit as well. Hoping that the F and F will turn back into me. And there he comes. Actually took the bait. Zero situational awareness. Sea vixen sees the opportunity. And shoves a 3 ton missile up his ass. And down he goes. And that's another kill down. Another guy that's going to be very annoying to fight. Luckily he is out now. Seal 13 B however is probably... One of the most annoying planes in the world to fight, but he full commits a vow to for whatever reason. Oh, it's a seal 39. Well, still a very annoying plane to fight. I'm not sure why you would full commit a vow to, however, but I don't mind it because that's going to be a plane I really don't like fighting. Go ahead on with the MiG 15. Fire flash number two, finds his mark, and he's going to be dead. G91. And these are the planes I kind of like fighting because they have bad retention, so I could just bleed them of energy. Even though they turn very well, they will never really get shots on you. He emerges, he turns after me. But at the point he's going to get guns on me, I'm already going to be 1.4, maybe a little bit more kilometers away. And we go into a very shallow turn in a very, well, a medium climb. We go horizontal at the top of a loop, but I'm still going 650 here. I don't really need to go up more because I don't want to stall out in front of someone else. So... We turn back down, we turn the afterburner off to not compress, to not get too much speed so I can use these flaps. Be careful with overusing the flaps because they are handy and they do make you turn better but they also make you bleed a lot of speed. I know that's normal with flaps but it's with these especially. He stalls out, we shoot him down and now we have to 1v1 a Q5 and this is one of those planes that's extremely annoying to fight. And you will see exactly how easy of a time he's gonna have shooting me down. He's turning in. I don't have the shot here. I could have tried to turn in. I would have been inside of his turning circle. But I wouldn't have gotten the shot anyway. So there's no use for me trying to well, pursue it. The Sea Vixen is still in the area however. But I'm not sure if he has any missiles left. Because he shot two of them at the F9F. And he shot it a bit too far away. So I'm going to assume that he's just kind of lobbing his missiles away. I'm not sure however. Because I lost sight of him for a good while. I'm just going to assume that the, the Sea Vixen is going to RTB soon here. I don't know. I feel like he's not going to be doing anything. And it turns out, well, you'll see. You'll see exactly what's going to happen. The Q5 is recommitting, however. And if he notices that the Sea Vixen doesn't have any missiles left, there goes a missile. So he only has one left at most. And he's going to be right behind him. So I think, yeah, that comes the fourth missile. So now I know 100% for sure that he's out of missiles. That's way too far away. The Q5 is pretty far. And is fast. And there he goes, Vixen breaks off. And I saw all four missiles being launched, so I can confidently say he is going to be RTB. He's not going to be doing anything anymore. Q5, pitching up for me. He only has 23mm, but I don't want to mess with him. And at this speed, like sure, I can bleed him of energy. The thing is, he will get it back quicker. And he has a lot more AOA than me, so I need to get out of his guns now. And as you can tell, he's trying to stay on my 6. He's throttle dropping. And I'm doing this on purpose. Because I know that guys really like to stay on your 6 by throttle dropping. So the first time, this time, I let him bleed all the speed. Then I try to run away. And now I'm bleeding my speed. And this switches it up a little bit. Make it so they don't know what I'm going to do. He's air braking at the worst possible time. He's going to try to extend away here. But at this point, he is too close. He is too slow. And I have plenty of ammo. He turns the wrong way. And he finds my guns. Sea Vixen landed in the middle of the map on a place where there's never been an airfield. Go ahead on with the G91, we shoot the fire flash, we miss it. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did to all the other G91s. It's gonna be a lot of 1v1s for the G91s this game, I know. But we just go into this shallow, medium steep climb. And if he chases me up here, he will just run himself out of energy. The G91 doesn't have the best retention it doesn't have the best high speed acceleration below 700 it's very respectable but anywhere above that it basically it just starts losing it just starts losing 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 it's a very i don't know why i'm not gonna say why actually because i have no idea 
and we are just turning in or using the flaps a little bit and again don't overuse the flaps because you will bleed your speed away and the, the second you are slow in this thing too slow in this thing you are going to die i missed a shot i can't get the shot on i don't have enough lead but i'm still kind of behind him so i'm just gonna stick the fight i'm just gonna stick the loop he turns back into my guns and i shoot him out of the air but that's not all we are now flying straight in there's a g91 right ahead of me he's gonna go for the a4e he just crashed but there's a second one so there's a hope for me that i can save him and then i look and i double take and i see a mig 19 coming from the stratosphere to dive on me so we go defensive his roll compresses pretty badly and he's keeping his afterburners on so i know that he's gonna overshoot eventually get out of his guns number two we do the exact same thing try to roll out of his guns make sure that he so it's 2v1 we got the g91 here and there's another g91 in the back they're both r4s i know they have missiles and the first one isn't very fast so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use my speed to get as far away from him as possible so he doesn't fire his missiles at me and if he does i will just outrun them i'm hoping he keeps them so i can just stall him out easier because he has a lot more weight on him but there comes missile number one i'm gonna be recommitting to the first one because i have a free head on here shoot a few rounds i have plenty of ammo we get a crit in and he seems to be pretty badly damaged i think i took his wingtip off and we got damage on the steel. So I'm going to be basically riding him off for the most part. I do want to be careful that I don't get jumped. Because he can still very easily kill me if I'm presenting myself. But for now I'm just going to be fighting the other guy. Like he isn't there. I shoot the fireflies away because I want to get rid of that drag. And in the 1v1 I don't really need it. I'm going to keep one here. Just to try to gun one, uh, one down. The one that started out on my left. Because he is going vertical here. And I want to get this guy out so I don't have to think about him anymore. So I'm going to be starting my turn. I'm still going 850. I'm going to be shooting straight ahead. Guided in. Blow him up. And now we are in the exact position I want to be in. As I have been in with all the other G91s. He's going to be turning into me slightly. I want to keep this little turn up. So that if he shoots an A9B he can't actually lead it. And by the time it's tracking me it will fly way behind me. And I don't really have to explain this anymore, do I? And there he goes, he shoots the missile. It goes way behind me, just as expected. And just a patented Swift F7 stall climb. Or spiral climb, whatever you want to call it. I don't care, and I don't know. And at this point, I will just turn back under him, or into him. And he is not doing very well. He tries to stay horizontal, bad idea. He should have dived away. And then I had very little chance of actually killing him because his roll rate is so good. But I crit him, shoot some more rounds, and down he goes. And that's basically all I have for you today. For the end here, I will have a three-man wipe, three-man squad, very quickly kill all of them. Here we go, PE3 coming head on with me, doesn't actually see me. We blow him out of the air. We will extend now. We see a high-value target on the left. It's the same number as us, so that's probably just as good as us. Go head on. He tries to dodge it. He has no chance. Just impeccable aim here. Impeccable skill. He never knew what actually hit him. F3F. He has three letters in his name. That might be very strong. He takes the fire flash. And that's three guys basically dead in like half a minute. Are you impressed yet? Because I sure am. But in all seriousness... Thank you all for watching. I might get some more Death Silver footage. I'm not sure yet. We'll see if I have the time, effort and motivation. Hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.